Well, hello everybody. This is Cruise Man out on the 2018 Goldwing. On my way to Wingding 2018. It's Sunday, it's, uh, oh, let's see, it's about 9.45 in the morning and about 87 degrees and I just crossed over the Arkansas border. I'm in Texarkana, previously Texarkana, Texas, now Texarkana. I am in the Arcana part, so I'm in uh, Arkansas. On my way to Mississippi, and it's been a nice ride so far, almost no wind. Uh, it's getting warmer, it's about 87 degrees right now, and I think it's gonna get up in the 90s, but you know, it's not brutally hot. I am pulling my Bushtech trailer keeping an eye on my gas mileage. This is the first multi-day trip I've taken. Uh, actually, the first trip I've taken pulling the Bush Tech. So it'll be interesting to see how it affects the gas mileage. Now, most of you would make this trip in two days. I'm going to figure out how to turn it into a three-day ride because I'm taking only back roads, as you can see here. I'm not on an interstate. I'm just taking the small highways, going through all the little towns, because I like to take my time and kind of enjoy the ride, stop periodically, get off, you know, have a drink of water, or fill up with gas, do whatever, walk around a little bit. I just don't get in a hurry when I'm on a road trip. I'm also trying out some new products on this trip that I'm kind of excited to try. I am wearing the Bon armor, which is like an undergarment that you wear underneath your, you can wear them under your jeans, or in this case today, I'm wearing riding pants, but, and also wearing my Olympia jacket. You've probably seen this product advertised in the magazines. I've seen it for years and just never really uh, considered it until now, and I thought, you know, it might be a pretty cool idea to try this. And basically, how it works is this goes underneath your clothing. Like I say, it's kind of like underwear, but it has armor built in. And I got the, they have some garments that have this cool mesh fabric, very, very thin, and uh, really allows a lot of air to come through the garment. And I have both the pants and the shirt and they they're designed to fit very tight and so getting them on the first time takes a little effort because you have to kind of figure out how to put them on and um, but once you get them on they're actually comfortable and pretty cool so I'm trying this out. Now, what, what I did is I removed the armor from my Olympia jacket and my Olympia riding pants, and I'm just using the armor that's in the Bond armor. And one thing you notice right away is you feel more connected to the armor. It, it fits tight against your, against your joints, against the impact areas. So the knee armor fits tightly against your knee, your shoulders fit tightly, your elbows fit, every, all the armor points uh, because the material is stretchy and it's kind of fits tight on you, but it's not uncomfortably tight. And it, um, so, so anyway, I'm going to test this. I'm going to use this for the next several days on this road trip. I'm going to try it out, see how I like it, and then um, maybe do a whole video just on this Bond armor on how it works and how you wear it and how I like it and if I think it's a good choice. The other thing I'm trying out on this trip is my brand new Garmin Zumo 595LM. You can probably see where I have it mounted right here on the left handlebar. And I'm also going to do a video on how I installed this. Now what I did is I am using this with Bluetooth communication 
through my Cardo Pack Talk Bold headset. And the way I have this all hooked up is I have the Garmin paired with the B channel of my Cardo and I have the motorcycle paired to the A channel of the Cardo. So if I'm listening to the stereo FM or XM radio or anything coming from the bike, if the Zumo gives me directions, it will mute the audio from the A channel and all I'll hear is the GPS. And then once the GPS is finished giving me instructions, it goes back to the music from the A channel from the motorcycle. So I'm not even using the GPS on the Goldwing. And, you know, I've only ridden maybe a couple hundred miles so far today. Not even that, maybe 150 miles. And just in that little amount of time, I can already tell this Zumo from Garmin is what the GPS on the Honda should have been. This thing is what I expect from a motorcycle GPS. Number one, it tells you the speed limit. It warns you if the speed limit up ahead is getting ready to change. It gives you an alert. Now these are things you can turn on or off, but I have them turned on right now because I want to see how they work. It gives you clear and distinct directions. And when you stop the motorcycle and it shuts off, to get gas or to go in and eat, do whatever you're doing. When you come back out and turn the motorcycle back on, it picks right up where it left off and the audio continues to work, unlike the Honda GPS. Most of you have noticed if you're on a route on the Honda GPS and you stop in the middle of that route to get gas, when you start that route back up again, you have no more audio that's a very common problem. It, is, it happens to me all the time. Garmin, so far, is working flawlessly. Now, I'm going to do a complete full review on this Garmin Zumo and all the features that it has. And I mean, it's got a ton of them. And it's got a lot of features. Honestly, why Honda didn't do a deal with Garmin to put this technology onto the Goldwing, I'll never know. You know, it. I, Honda could have charged an extra $500 for the motorcycle. It's that impressive. And it would have been a state-of-the-art, out-of-the-box touring bike. I also was able to lay out my routes for this entire trip with names that can have spaces in the names and have as many waypoints as I want. And I have quite a few. I have. 15 to 20 waypoints per route and I've got about seven different routes loaded. So, so far I'm happy with it. I'll get more details, not a final review. I've only used it for a few hours, but um, I'll give you more updates as the trip goes on. I'm planning on doing a little motor vlogging each day. So, um, just check every day YouTube channel for more information. Now, if you like this video and other videos like it, please take a minute to click that little subscribe button down below. And if you click on the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I come out with a new video. Should have quite a few new videos coming out with uh, Wing Ding going on. Another thing that I'll mention real quick, for those of you that are gonna be at Wing Ding, I had several people email me and put in comments asking me where they can get, believe it or not, they want to know where they can get a Cruise Man's Garage ball cap. And right before I left, as I was loading up the trailer, I decided I threw about 10 of them in the trailer. So if anybody is looking for a Cruise Man's Garage ball cap, I will have some with me. Now they're $20 cash. I can't take checks, I can't take credit cards at Wingding. It has to be cash. But if you're interested in a ball cap, I've got some for $20. The new ones I have coming in 
are going up to $26, but I still have some of the $20 ones left. And of course, I've already told you before, I'll have some of my DVDs there for $75 cash. And those are for those of you that are still riding the 2001 to 2017 Goldwing or F6B. Maintenance DVDs guarantee you'll save a thousand dollars a year if you do your own maintenance on just on labor. Can really make a difference in your labor costs. So heading down the highway, as you can see here, it's not much traffic. In fact, I had hardly any traffic this morning. Sunday, so not much traffic on Sunday. And heading out of Dallas, it was uh, really a nice, easy way to get out of town early on a Sunday morning. So I'm just leaving Texarkana on US 82. And I'm going to kick myself up here to cruising speed. And I will update you down the road before I get to my final destination. You know, there's something to just about being out on a small highway on the back roads uh, without a lot of traffic, without a lot of semis going by. I much prefer this type of riding uh, than I do riding on an interstate. I mean, to me, this is what motorcycling is all about. Just getting out on your own or with your significant other on the back and just enjoying the countryside, not in any hurry to be anywhere, and just enjoying the days. I'm stopped because these red lights are flashing. I don't know if a train's coming or not. I don't hear a train. I don't see a train. But the guy across from me has stopped. So are these lights malfunctioning? Or what do we do now? Because I don't hear a train or feel a train, and I think I can make it. Never had that happen before. Okay, now I'm on US 425 at south, even though I'm actually heading north. And it's about uh, almost one o'clock in the afternoon. I've been on the road since uh, just after 5 a.m. And I gotta say, the uh, wing soft seat is really helping out a bunch. Uh, the Rivco Aero pegs are doing their job. And the uh, GPS, uh, it takes some getting used to, like all GPSs. You kind of have to learn its uh, little peculiarities, but it's much, much better than what we have on the Goldwing, the 2018 Goldwing. Much more advanced, so I think I really like it. And this uh, Bond armor that I'm wearing is uh, actually quite comfortable. Uh, you don't even really know it's there. So I'm, uh, it's a little warm out. It's about 91, 92 degrees. And it's, uh, you know, I'm ready for the riding day to end. I've got about another hour before I get to my uh, destination. And I'll check in with you about the time I cross the Mississippi River. Okay, getting ready to cross the Mississippi River and head into Mississippi. I don't believe I've ever crossed on this bridge before. Doesn't look familiar, it looks newer than the one I've crossed on in the past.
Well, I just stopped to get gas for the last time before I head to the hotel. I don't think there's much else to say today. We'll pick it up again tomorrow. So that's everything for now from Cruise Man's Garage. Check in tomorrow.